All right, in this video, we're gonna be making this little planter box right here, all for around 20 bucks in materials. It's a fairly easy build and you can definitely DIY it. And I will show you how I do it. Okay, these right here are some treated pine fence pickets. They're, you know, the wooden pickets that you have along a fence. Um, they're super cheap, like around three bucks a piece, but they're great for little outdoor projects like a planter box or uh, different things like that. Now, because all of these are super rough cut, um, they're all a little bit wonky, I'm gonna go ahead and mill these up into some more manageable smaller sizes so that we can try and flatten them through the planer and everything and get them roughly uh, flat and square. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, for starters, we are working with treated lumber that's been chemically treated. So we definitely wanna wear uh, our respirator and everything while cutting this up and sanding and doing all that fun stuff. On each of these fence pickets, I start by cutting one side straight on the table saw just so that I have a decent reference edge so that I can then rip down all of these pieces into two, two and a half inch wide strips. After the table saw, I give all the strips a few passes through the planer on both sides just to get everything nice and flat. After we get everything flat, we hop over to the miter saw uh, where I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of my final pieces. Now there's a lot of pieces to this planter box, around 40 of them total. Rather than explaining every cut I'm making here, I'm gonna put up a little bit of a cut list that I put together, which you can pause, screenshot it if you're wanting to build this exact one. Um, you can also make adjustments to all the sizes to make the planter box as large or as small as you want. It's up to you. Using a stop block like this that's clamped down to your workbench is a really good way to make a bunch of repeatable cuts when you have multiple pieces that are the same size. So I'm using that stop block to cut a set of pieces and then I just move the block over to the next length and cut another set and so on. Now the legs are gonna consist of eight separate pieces, but four of them I'm gonna have to rip down a, a little bit thinner than the other four. This is so that when I join all of these pieces uh, at a 90 degree angle, they'll be the same width on both sides. It makes more sense once you get the pieces actually assembled. Now the top frame piece that sits on top of the planter box is gonna be made with uh, 45 degree miters. So I'm cutting those here at the miter saw. I'm also really bad at blocking the camera while making half of these cuts. I don't know why, I'm not a good cameraman. after getting all the pieces cut now it's time to start drilling a whole bunch of pocket holes now I know there's all this debate on the internet that's like oh if you use pocket holes you're not a real woodworker but for projects like this it's great super easy super quick way to join all of these pieces together you don't have to do any fancy joinery pocket holes are great if you disagree with me you can come at me in the comments it's all right now, if you don't have a pocket hole jig, there's other ways that you can join all these pieces, but in all honesty, go get a pocket hole jig. What are you doing? It's great, totally worth the money, I promise. You won't regret it. The pocket holes are primarily going on all of the pieces that build up the, the frame of each side. Um, so our legs and then the boards that join between our legs. 
I also decided around this time that I actually wanted to add a little bit of a taper to the legs. This is totally optional. You don't have to do this. I just figured it would look a little better. So here I'm just adding that angled taper down by the feet of the legs. This is also a good opportunity to give a little PSA on workshop safety. When you're using stop blocks like I am, it's really good idea to make sure that the blade stops spinning before you lift it back up. Otherwise that piece that's between the blade and the stop block can get caught in there and shoot out like crazy. And because I was making a bunch of repeatable cuts, it's really easy to get complacent and not pay attention. And then this happens. Now, luckily it wasn't bad and that piece didn't come flying at me, but you never know, it could, so be safe. Now I'll save you from watching an hour and a half of me sanding all these pieces, but I basically just went through, sanded everything down to remove all the saw marks and planer marks that were still on the wood. If you're going for that super worn rustic vibe for your planter box, then you definitely don't have to sand, you can leave all the saw marks, it's up to you. And we're finally on to assembling everything. It's important when you are using pocket holes to join your pieces together that you clamp everything down in the position that you want it. Uh, this just keeps the, the boards from kind of wandering around while you screw the screws in because with pocket holes, they can have a tendency to do that sometimes. Now I'm using one of my vertical slats here to make a mark uh, just so I know where to position the top and bottom of these boards so that these vertical slats when they get mounted to the back will be the same length. After you get one of them done, just do it three more times until you have two sides with the wide legs and two sides with the skinny legs. Now I'll admit here I made a little bit of a mistake. Uh, I went to put on all of these vertical slats on all four sides, when in reality I should have only put it on the sides with the wide legs and left the two sides with the skinny legs without the slats until I get the whole thing assembled because the slats end up getting in the way of my pocket holes that I drilled, which you'll see here in a minute. I'm just using nails to tack these in place, uh, mostly because I didn't have screws that were short enough. I was too lazy to go buy some and I had these nails laying around, but you can use screws or whatever fastener you want. I also added a small one inch wide brace to the bottom of each side. Uh, this will be for the slats to fit on in the bottom once it's all assembled. Now when I went to assemble all the sides, this is when I realized my mistake and noticed that I didn't really have a good angle to get to the pocket holes. I actually tried a really dumb idea of taking a little spoon gouge and just gouging out some material in hopes that I could get a better angle. That didn't work. That was stupid. I don't know why I thought it would work. So I realized on my two skinny sides that have the pocket holes, uh, I was just gonna have to take all the slats back out, which really kind of sucked because then I had to pull all these little tiny nails out as well, and it sucked. So don't put those in before you put it all together. So with those all off, I can go ahead and assemble all four of the sides using the pocket holes that I couldn't get to earlier. I'm still a little salty about that mistake. Once all four sides are together, now I can go back and put those vertical slats and the little braces at the bottom back in.
Now the top is also assembled with, you guessed it, pocket holes. You gotta be a little more careful on your 45s when you put these pocket holes in, um, just to make sure that they're, the holes aren't gonna be sticking out on one of your edges. Quick, I'll give 10 points to whoever can guess how the top gets attached to the base. If you guess pocket holes, you get 10 points. And there you have it, it's all assembled. Except for the little slats that we'll put in the bottom, but we'll add those here in a minute. Now because this is treated pine, it always looks a little ugly, let's be honest. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw some stain on mine. The stain I'm using is just some Ready Seal deck stain uh, in a pecan color. Pecan? 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 I don't know how you say it. And yet again, we get a glimpse into how lazy I am because I could only find this little tiny foam brush and I didn't want to go buy a better brush. So it took me like an hour to stain this little planter box. So don't be like me. Go buy a good foam brush, stain brush, whatever. Now we can go ahead and throw these bottom slats in. You don't really have to fasten them. The weight of everything should hold them in there, but you can fasten them if you want. While the stain dried, I convinced my girlfriend to come shop for plants to put in it. It didn't take a lot of convincing. She likes plant shopping. I also enlisted her to help me get it all finished up. Now I'll start off by saying, I'm not really a plant person. I can't even keep a fake plant alive, honestly. So take this with a grain of salt, but this is how I set it up. So we stapled some landscaping fabric to all four sides on the inside and the bottom, just to keep any of the soil from leaking out any cracks or crevices. After that, we threw a few inches of gravel in the bottom uh, just to add a little extra drainage for the soil. And then we came in with our potting soil. Then we did our best to organize these plants in there and get them wherever we thought they might look good. I'll be honest, I don't even know what kind of plants these are. I just thought, some of them looked cool, so I threw them in there. I'm sure there's someone out there who can tell me whether these are terrible to plant together or not. I don't know. I guess we'll see, but I thought they looked good. And there you have it, a cute little planter box with some pretty flowers. If you happen to like this video, give me a like, subscribe, thumbs up, all that stuff. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching.